Good morning, my amazing things. Welcome back to the Cavern of Secrets. I hope everyone enjoyed the weekend and stayed warm because it was freezing where I am. <laughs> I didn't get much writing done, unfortunately. But it's now warmer, so I should be hitting the keyboard, <laughs> I guess you could say. But since I am passionate about writing, and I have been since I was really young, I decided to share my writing tips and my process for those of you who are interested in writing and wanting to take it up as a hobby. I would suggest maybe starting small, so short story, before you dive into a full-blown novel. It's where I started. I actually, that's actually wrong. I started with poetry, and then I moved to short stories and novels. I know, but that's where I started. It doesn't matter where you start, though, honestly. If you have characters already in mind that will fit the world that you want to create, and you can't really stop with a short story and you want to keep going, go for it. The only difference between a short story and a novel, as far as I know, short stories are basically one plot. Novels are multiple plots with one main plot, where the little plots all lead to the main plot. At least that's how it is for me. So the reason why I chose to discuss my writing tips and process is I've had many people ask me how I can create full-blown worlds and characters with huge backstories, personalities, all of that stuff. I never thought it was that amazing, but many people over the years have found it fascinating that I could do this. So I thought I'd give you a little insight into writing. So one of the big ones for me is Campfire Technologies. It's a software that has really helped me keep everything in one place and in specific categories. As you can see, there's character section, obviously the manuscript, which is really nice because you can keep all of that right there. There's maps, research. So if you're like me who does an extensive amount of research for your characters, the world you're build, uh, building, or if... All right, I'm going to explain research a little better. So for my first novel that I published, which is about a haunted house, for any of you that are interested in that, I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in buying it. My sister's actually loving that book. I'm very happy. She's finding it interesting and there's some pretty twisted stuff in there. <laughs> hey, I'm going to tell you American Horror Stories Murder House is what inspired that story, so it's going to be twisted. But I had to do a lot of research on history to give the house its background. So where do these spirits came from? their stories, things like that. I also did a lot of research on uh, exorcisms, but different. I wanted it different than your normal, what you see in the movies. I wanted something completely different and unique. The new book that I'm working on, I have actually did a lot of research on crime, uh, how police do their investigations for missing people, uh, uh, I also did research on warrants and things like that. So there's a lot of research that goes into every book that I write, and this is such a great place to put everything. There's also maps, but unfortunately, it's not a map builder. You have to build the map elsewhere, which kind of sucks. I hate that. I wish everything was all here. <laughs> It would be so much better. I know a lot of people have been saying that as well. But this isn't a huge company that made this. It started with college students, I believe, that created Campfire. And a lot of people um, helped fund this. Uh, regular people funded it. I think they started a Kickstarter for it. There also isn't an editor in this. So that kind of sucks too. So while you're writing your manuscript, there is nothing telling you if you made a grammatical error, if you spelt something wrong, if you have the wrong punctuation or any of that just doesn't tell you. 
However, everything else is perfect to keep everything in order and not all in your head like I used to. Uh, I actually had notebooks full of random details for various stories I wanted to write, and I also kept a lot of information stored in my mind for later. <laughs> Let's just say storing everything in the mind isn't the best practice or in notebooks because when you have a notebook full of different characters and stories, it's easy to mix things up and not know what's what. I also would forget a lot of things like character names, personality traits, locations, and other important details. Or I would start meshing the two together from various stories all together into one and it, it was a mess to say the least. Having a software that keeps everything in order is great and all, but where do you begin? For me, sometimes a movie will give me an idea or a book. Other times it's photos as weird as that might sound. So I used to roleplay a lot back in the day on MySpace and I would create my own stories for people to join in and include their characters. Sometimes I would join other people's stories with my own characters. It was a lot of fun and most of my ideas came from searching online for a character that I would want to use for that specific roleplay. The rest would just fall together. For instance, let's say the picture is of an elf warrior. I'd obviously choose a fantasy setting for such a character. Then I would have to figure out if there's a war or if the war had ended. From there, who was the battle with? What caused the war? And as you can tell, writing is all about asking questions and answering those questions. While in college, my professors would give us tasks that would be out of our comfort zones, one of which was getting two genres outside of what we were used to and creating a story that fit those two genres or incorporated those two genres. I received romance and science fiction, which wasn't my taste at all. However, I created something that I'm hoping to actually make into a full novel at some point. I created a love story set in a steampunk world. It was actually a lot of fun and taught me how to expand my horizons. And it's what started my sci-fi novel, which I have not published or finished yet. I'm waiting till I have a few books under my belt before I delve into my series and sci-fi novel and fantasy novels. I do have a lot. <laughs> I have a lot. Another practice was taking a group of photos and trying to write a story based on those images. That was actually one of the toughest methods for me, surprisingly. We also received a tiny snippet and had to create a short story based on it. So the snippet went something like a teen is running from bullies when they spot a store. Immediately they rush inside and what happens next? Some of my cl classmates came up with the fantasy approach and unfortunately I was no different. I came up with a pack of old cards coming to life and causing havoc in the store. What would you have come up with? Let me know in the comments if you would have come up with something entirely different. Everyone has their own process of writing and one that I still struggle with is when to end a chapter. Usually a chapter ends when one plot is finished and most novels have minor plots that lead to the main plot like I mentioned. Sometimes I use days so when one day ends I start a new chapter but sometimes it's not the best approach to use days because things can happen at night and then it becomes a big mess. If there isn't any more to tell for that particular plot point, it's time to end the chapter. That's what I've learned. Writing is something that can take many years to perfect. Some people start writing and are amazing, but many fail in other areas. One might be impeccable at creating the characters and world, but fall apart at the plot points or grammar. Another might be great at grammar and spelling, but have a hard time with descriptions and world building. It all depends, and I think every writer has a flaw that they learn to overcome. My flaw is descriptions and showing, not telling. I tell a lot. <laughs> I tell the writer what's going on instead of showing things. I have a hard time with facial descriptions or body movements in writing. I don't know how everyone reacts to certain situations. I don't know how to have a character act differently for reactions than another character or how somebody's faces with certain expressions. It's very difficult for me. I'm also not that great with grammar and punctuation. So I use Grammarly as an editor and it is very, very good at catching a lot of my issues. And 
that's pretty much all the softwares that I use. I don't have a map builder. I won't need one yet until I write my fantasies, fantasy stories, and my sci-fi novel. My vampire series, I don't need one because it all takes place in the same city. And yeah, they're all connected. Even though they are going to be different characters in every single book. Some characters are going to seep their way in, but yeah. Um, which actually brings me to publishing and self-publishing. Uh, both have pros and cons that each individual must weigh to make their choice on what they feel is the best method for them. I actually have heard many people badmouth self-published authors, and I'm going to tell you, don't let them discourage you if you want to self-publish. Honestly, it's not for everybody for sure, but to me, there's no wrong method. Some self-published authors make great money and become published authors. If you write one book, you most likely aren't going to make a fortune regardless of what method you choose. I'm planning on publishing two books a year, and yeah, I have enough stories to keep that up for many years to come. And I keep starting new ones, which is really probably bad, but if I come up with a new idea, I write it down and I put it on the back burner for another day to look at. So the reason why I chose to sell publish is I didn't like the cons of going through an agent and publishing house so I chose the self-publishing method. I actually handle every aspect of my book which is a lot more work and I have to time everything into it so I can determine the deadlines. A lot of self-published authors hire an editor, a cover artist, and a marketing team. I don't have the money for that uh, so I do all of those things myself. I market my book, I do the cover art, and I also edit my own work. It takes a lot of time and perseverance, but it can be done. I will let you know that it can be done. With a publishing house, I would only have to worry about writing the book and making changes they felt needed to be made. It is easier for sure, which is why a lot of people go that route and it has some great benefits. Their book will be in most major bookstores and not just limited to a few or less. Do some research and you'll find the one that seems to fit you the best. Research is a big part of writing, <laughs> as I mentioned. Uh, I research names, time periods, science terms, if I'm writing a science fiction piece, crime details. And the reason why I started writing is it let me have an escape from reality. I mean, when I was a kid, life sucked. I'm not going to be, <laughs> I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It sucked. Didn't get any better in my teens, and it certainly didn't get better as an adult. Life sucks. <laughs> I don't care. It is hard as hell. It is not easy, and everybody has their own struggles, especially today. Uh, but the other reason I write is because I want to share my stories with everyone instead of keeping them all to myself. That's why I started publishing my books. People have often requested to read my work when I was in high school, uh, but I always said no. I was worried people wouldn't understand and judge me because they already did. When I would tell them that I was writing a vampire novel, I got instantly, why? Are you obsessed with dead people? No, I'm not obsessed with dead people. Now that I'm older, I just don't care. I want people to meet my characters and get lost in their world. That's the most amazing part of writing. I hope this was helpful, and if not, feel free to... Contact me if you have any questions. You can comment here. You can DM me on Twitter. I'd be happy to offer assistance. I'm still learning, so I don't know everything, but I will help you the best I can. Thank you so much for watching and sticking around to the end. Later tonight, I'll be reviewing... Actually, no. Next week! I should say, actually, Friday. Not next week. Friday, I'll be reviewing Skinamarink and... I've decided this was going to be Vampire Month, so everything vampires until the end. Stay tuned and take care until next time. Bye, everyone!